Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about the link between the nervous and endocrine systems. So first, hormones. Uh, those are chemical regulators that are released um, by endocrine glands throughout the body. So uh, glands and cells and tissues throughout the body secrete hormones, these chemical regulators. Um, and when they're released, they go into the interstitial fluid surrounding the cells. And from there, they're taken up into the bloodstream to go in full body-wide circulation. Um, so the nervous and endocrine systems work together to control everything the whole body does. Uh, so we need both systems because they act to control the body in very different ways. So the nervous system provides control that is immediate. So the nerve impulses are sent and the effect is nearly immediate. Um, and then just as quickly as those effects took place, those effects are fleeting. They go away as soon as those impulses are not being sent by the nervous system anymore. And then the effects are also very local and specific. Um, so the nervous system, we have neurons that are carrying information that are communicating with other parts of the body that are going to very specific places, going to very specific organs or structures or muscles or wherever those commands are being carried. So it's very local and specific depending on what the command is and where it's going. Compared to the endocrine system, uh, it's very slow because the endocrine system is our system of hormones. So it takes a long time. Uh, once there is stimulation to secrete hormones, it takes a while to actually start secreting those hormones for those hormones to be taken up into the bloodstream and for them to travel through the bloodstream to whatever the target cells are in the body that they need to act on. Uh, so the effects of the endocrine system are a lot slower to take action, but it also means that they're a lot longer lasting. So the effects of the endocrine system last as long as those hormones are still swimming around in the blood. Uh, so if we don't want the effect of the endocrine system or of those hormones anymore, uh, then we have to rely on the liver and the kidneys to take up those hormones and filter them from the blood to um, basically end or slow down that function. Now, because hormones are going into the blood, which is then delivered throughout the entire body, uh, the effects of hormones and of the endocrine system are body-wide and a lot more general. Um, so although hormones act on specific target cells, so only certain cells throughout the body will be affected by any given hormone, uh, that hormone is still sent throughout the entire body as opposed to in the nervous system where that information or that command is sent to only one specific place. So the effects of the endocrine system are more body-wide. So it's really important that we have both of these systems working together to control everything in the body because the way that they control is entirely different. Uh, so anytime we need something to happen nearly instantaneously, that needs to be controlled by the nervous system. So movement, uh, motor control, that's all under the uh, command of the nervous system because we don't have time to wait for a hormone to travel through the blood to tell the bicep to contract, just as an example. Uh, so anything that needs to happen immediately and doesn't need to last a long time necessarily, um, and that needs to be very local or specific, those would all be controlled by the nervous system. Things that we want to take place over longer periods of time, uh, things that are usually more uh, related to regulating homeostasis, so like blood glucose and growth and cellular metabolism and things like that, uh, things that we want to remain relatively, relatively steady over a long period of time are controlled by the endocrine system via hormones. Uh, so the pituitary gland, that's also referred to as the hypophysis, um, that is commonly referred to as the master endocrine gland. That is because the pituitary gland secretes several different hormones that go out to other endocrine glands throughout the body to tell those glands to secrete their hormones. Um, so if we look at the endocrine system in an isolated sort of way. We just look at all of the glands and tissues and cells that secrete hormones. 
um, we would say that the pituitary gland is the master gland, like the pituitary is in charge of much of the endocrine system. Um, so it secretes several hormones that control other endocrine glands. But I do want to point out that the pituitary gland is not acting on its own. So although it's the master of the endocrine system, it has its own master. So the pituitary gland is controlled by the hypothalamus of the diencephalon in the brain. Um, so you know, I mentioned that the nervous system and the endocrine system work together to control everything in the body, uh, but they have to do that in a coordinated way. We can't have the two systems controlling the body and not communicating with each other. So essentially, the nervous system is in charge, the brain is the boss, and the hypothalamus, part of the brain, is what is controlling the pituitary gland. And the pituitary gland essentially controls most of the rest of the endocrine system. Okay, so the hypothalamus controls the pituitary gland and the pituitary gland controls much of the endocrine system. Uh, the hypothalamus synthesizes nine hormones. Uh, two of those nine uh, actually get sent down to, to the pituitary gland to be stored there and then the pituitary secretes it later as needed. And then the pituitary gland synthesizes seven hormones and ultimately it secretes nine because it secretes the seven that it produces there and the two that come from the hypothalamus. Uh, the hypothalamus synthesizes seven hormones that it also secretes and those seven actually go down to act on the pituitary gland to tell the pituitary gland to secrete its other hormones. Okay, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching.